Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. This week, we have the, of course, fantastic and exciting announcement of the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Um, we're also talking about the NXP Cup, which is a fantastic uh, technology competition put on by NXP each year. Um, and there's also an Electromaker project, which is huge scale. Um, we managed to miss Halloween. Unfortunately, we couldn't have a show last week, but we still have a little Halloween project to show you. And uh, today, we are announcing probably the biggest competition we have have ever had. So with all that to get through, let's get on with the show. We're going to start this week's show by looking at a 2D stroboscopic display. Now I may have even said that wrong because it's such a concept that is alien to me. This is a real life hologram machine and it's built completely from scratch using uh, 3D printed parts. It's a phenomenal project with a huge scope with a, a truly amazing outcome. And this is the outcome. And as the thumbnail for this video says, this is not CGI, this is real. What you are looking at here is a frame with a bunch of solenoid valves at the top, which are uh, dropping single drops of UV ink, which are being lit by UV LEDs. Now, this is the uh, first, well, it took many, many iterations to get to this point, but this is the first version of it. This is the 3D Printed Life YouTube channel. Um, and uh, I showed you that bit just so you can see what it is. But this video is a, an insanely deep dive into to every single level of how this thing was uh, put together. This was built from scratch. It is a truly magnificent idea. Like I said, uh, this is the scope of this thing is huge. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it goes through all of the different iterations. These little valves, or sorry, these little droppers took so many 3D printed iterations, but I guess the clue is probably in the title of the YouTube channel. Um, so yes, uh, the, this is an incredibly impressive project for a number of reasons, not least that it's something that I feel like is not something that's built outside of an industrial setting very often, and even then in a very high-level research and development setting. Um, but the fact that this works the way that it does is is just is just incredible. Um, so I, I really recommend you go and watch the video through. It is a fantastic watch. It is beautifully well presented. But yes, um, the actual... Uh, what actually the way it actually works is just beautifully impressive in and of itself um, and the uh, creator 3d printed life is al already talking about uh, some tweaks and things to make it a little bit better so i imagine there'll be a follow-up video coming relatively soon now, if you watch this channel, you probably already watch Electro Boom, and you may have already seen this video. Um, but one of the latest videos is how to make intelligence with a basic switch. Now, by intelligence, what he's uh, essentially getting at is that with any set of basic switches, you can make logic gates, AND gates, OR gates, XOR gates. Some of you probably were trained in this and know it already. Some of you, like me, had to kind of bang your head against these concepts until you understood them. Um, and this takes you right the way through uh, simple gates, right up to how you can uh, make them into persistent logic gates. And of course, after that comes added and everything that goes into essentially being a very simple processor of sorts. So as well as uh, the whiteboard and just generally talking about what's happening, each time he does it, there's a physical example as well on the breadboard. So for example, um, this is just showing a general on and off uh, toggle switch. This is invert. Oh, sorry, this is the inverter. Yes. So this is showing how to invert the output. Um, and then, of course, going through lots of different kinds of switch as well. So here's the NOR gate. And then there's a physical example of it too. Um, yeah, it's just a really nice step-by-step -step explainer of different logic gates and of course as I mentioned ends by talking about how you can take this further and turning those logic systems into a basic form of processor. Um, it's a fantastic video I'm sure you're all familiar with Electroboom already but I thought it was worth putting in the show because it is fairly valuable whether you are getting into hardware DIY electronics or getting into coding the logic on microcontrollers this kind of logic is important to know. Now, as I mentioned, we did miss Halloween, unfortunately, because we couldn't have a show last week for various reasons. But there was one Halloween project that I did want to draw attention to, despite the fact that we're a little bit after the day now. Because in terms of scale, this is probably the biggest Halloween setup I've seen in a while. So Electromaker community member Harpo turned his entire apartment into a giant Cheshire cat face. Uh, this is a very large scale project, obviously, um, but the way it was done also uses a mixture of sort of hobby microcontroller stuff that we're used to and some professional grade DMX uh, triggering that you would usually find in things like theatres. Um, and uh, if you want to see a quick example of it working, I should point out that um, the version that is playing here, um, if you watch it yourself, uh, there is music to go with it. And I would absolutely recommend watching the video um, because, yes, this is a, a Takata and Fugues playing on uh, lights outside his apartment with the two large uh, Cheshire cat eyes and the face. And it's just, yeah, it's just a truly magnificent thing. Look at that. <laughs> It's just the scale of it. This is the size of a building, all controlled perfectly to the music, which of course you can't hear. But um, yeah, if you go and watch the video, you'll be able to hear that yourself. 
Now, Harpo is someone who is no stranger to doing this. Um, as it mentions, um, the, this is all hardware obtained for free or from doing past shows. Um, and when you see the hardware involved, um, some of it is, as I mentioned, very high scale professional stuff. Um, there are some yeah, LED par cans, um, which are uh, used for a lot of stage lighting. Um, and uh, they are using here, this is a USB Pro Mark II for uh, DMX triggering. Um, I'm not familiar with this particular brand. I have used them in the past when I've helped at theater setups. Um, but the, this was never my... Uh, 100% expertise side of it but I've just spent a lot of time kind of crewing in theatres and doing tech for theatres and gigs so I've, I've had my hands on this stuff quite a lot um, but yeah if you want to know how it's done this is a very thorough write-up of it all and of course the code is all available as well so I will leave a link to it all in the description and as mentioned if you do uh, if you do come to the page don't forget to click on the video itself because it is absolutely fantastic before we move on, a little quick housekeeping. If you are watching the Electromaker show, you are watching it on our YouTube channel, which is Electromaker. Um, and if you aren't already subscribed, um, clicking subscribe will do us a big favor. Um, it's just one of those YouTube things. The more subscribers you have, the more likely they are to show you to other people. Uh, the little bell icon here next to the subscribed button, um, if you click on it, um, it gives you the option of uh, personalized uh, uh, notifications. I don't really know what they do. I've never really noticed anything uh, changing. Uh, but when you click all, um, that means that whenever we put a show up on the channel, you will get a notification up here in the top corner. Um, it's just a great way of making sure that you don't miss any Electromaker shows. You know as soon as they go live. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, you'll get this notification here. Not on your desktop unless you have browser notifications turned on, which is something I wouldn't necessarily recommend. And if you are enjoying this very video, I'd also appreciate it if you head down and click the like button. I know asking for likes and subscriptions is a bit of an asinine thing that all YouTubers do, but it actually does make a difference. Um, if you click like on a video, uh, YouTube is far more likely to recommend it to other like-minded people. Another more direct way you can support us is financially, and rather than having a Patreon or anything like that, we have a store. So as you can see here, um, there's a vast variety of things from a huge variety of vendors. Um, and yes, you can see Raspberry Pi here, and we will, as soon as we can get stock, have the new Raspberry Pi 02W in store as well. Um, you're probably also seeing crowd supply floating around up here. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't necessarily realize is that uh, anything that gets funded on crowd supply, um, that we talked about on funding website things, uh, we also take a stock of in the in the store so if you want to support a crowd supply project and support the show at the same time you can come to the electromaker website and buy it through us um, of course if you uh, haven't got the money to uh, get stuff for an electronics project or you're already well stocked under the community tab you can uh, upload your projects and uh, they that can be a show off you don't have to tell us how you did it um, or it can be a full-blown tutorial uh, it can be a write-up of something you're uh, thinking about doing. It could even just be a YouTube video that you have made um, that you uh, put a little bit of context in and you embed on the site. Um, I check the uh, projects page every day on Electromaker for things that I can put on the show and share on our social channels. Um, and I do love it, especially when newer people are coming and putting their ideas into our site. It's a really lovely thing. Uh, and of course, you can see here uh, our Discord server, which is growing by the day. Uh, you can join it. Um, and if you do want to join the Discord server, do jump in, do say hello, do tell us what you are doing. Um, there's a lot of people in there, but um, Discord servers, in my experience, take a little bit of time to warm up and get going. And as soon as people start chipping in and kind of saying, hey, what are you guys doing? I'm pretty sure it's going to become quite a fun little community there too. Um, but anyhow, that is it for uh, our little self-promotion part of the show. Um, I would appreciate it if you choose to do any one of these things, but as always, it is not the most important thing in the world. Uh, this is a free YouTube show and it shall always remain so. Uh, and that being said, let's get back to the show. It is now time for the part of the show we call Funding Website Things, and that is because we look at things on funding websites. This week we are just taking a look at one thing that is coming up on Crowdsupply, and I think it's something that a lot of people out there will be actually quietly quite excited about. Now, for people of a certain age, this will be a very nostalgic thing you're seeing right here. But when I say a certain age, it's actually quite a wide ra age range. Because this form factor of Casio watch is still something that you can buy today. Um, but it was very, very popular when I was small. Um, and uh, I believe it was actually already quite popular before that. It's just that my memory only goes back so far. Um, but this is a drop-in uh, hackable upgrade for the classic uh, Casio watch form factor. Now, it says the Casio F91W digital wristwatch. I wonder whether it will fit into other ones or not. That's something we'll have to find out. But yes, as it says, it's a replacement for the standard quartz movement in the form of a custom circuit powered by an ARM Cortex M0 Plus microcontroller. It has approximately one year of battery life, a USB port for programming code onto the watch, and a nine pin flex connector that allows the user to add small sensor boards inside the watch case. So you're essentially able to turn this old watch into a newer smartwatch 
but still retain a lot of the old features and feel of the original Casio watch. It's a really nice blend of old and new. Now, regular viewers of the show know how much I love the that very thing, blending old and new. Um, but the, this is not just blending old and new in theory. It's not taking something fundamentally new and putting it in an old body, like, say, making an internet radio out of an old wooden radio box. Um, this is actually keeping all of the old functions intact. So it says here, you know, you can use it for applications like timekeeping and alarms, but you can also write your own algorithms for alternate calendars and time systems, a decimal time app, for example, or the Mars clock for which we've written a demo. Um, and the features and specs are here if you would like to see it. And as always, this is an open source project. So this hasn't launched yet, as you can see by the uh, uh, form factor of this page. But if you would like to enter your name here, you will receive more updates when it goes live. And this is definitely one that we will be coming back to. If I remember correctly, I still have my old Casio watch kicking about in a box around here somewhere. I, it's managed to travel with me all of these years. I'm going to dig it out and see if it is actually going to be compatible. And if not, I might have to actually get myself one of these watches just so that I can try this out. Um, because yeah, I, DIY smartwatches are something I'm very interested in anyway, this has really piqued my interest in a very special way. Now, as I mentioned at the very start of the show, we have a very special competition today. It is in fact the biggest competition we've ever had on the show, it is giving away certainly the most valuable thing we've ever given away. And what we are giving away today is this. Now, this is the Analog Discovery Pro from Digilent. It is a mixed signal oscilloscope and logic analyzer. Um, and what you're seeing on the front here are four analog inputs. There are two digital, uh, sorry, four analog inputs, two analog outputs for function and wave generation, and a, a breakout for digital I.O. Um, there is a huge amount that you can do with this thing right out of the box. And in fact, I wrote a uh, overview slash review of it for the Electromaker website, which we'll look at in just a moment. Um, but the thing about this device, straight off the bat that I can tell you that I found just unique um, is, I mean, okay, small form factor, that's really useful. Um, it has fantastic software for your computer. That is fantastic as well. In fact, the software is, is amazing. It's free. Um, even if you don't own one of these things, you can download the software and use it in demo mode to learn how to use that software if you decide to buy or uh, the Analog Discovery Pro or, of course, win this one. Um, and it's the same with um, all of Digilent's uh, logic analyzing and... Uh, um, box oscilloscope products oscilloscope <laughs> oscilloscope products they all use the uh, same waveforms uh, software but that unique thing that I thought was so cool about this is that um, the FPGA running this thing um, has a Linux boot system on it so if you boot it in Linux mode, you can connect to it via serial, USB serial, um, and you can talk directly to the oscilloscope and write Python code on it. You can write tests, software tests for hardware on this box without any other um, software on your host computer, just anything that can host a, a, a serial window. It's really quite amazing. Anyway, um, that's a very waffly intro. Let's have a quick look at the article that I wrote about it and maybe a quick look at the digital insight as well. So if you would like a slightly more long form review slash overview, um, you can head to the Electromaker website, look under the blog tab, and uh, you can find my review. Um, it's a review and an overview because um, as I mentioned in the review, I'll be the first to admit that um, I am not working on anything in my level of hobby DIY electronics that comes close to putting this thing through its paces. In fact, the entire time I was working with this thing, I was struck by how easy it was to do everything I wanted to do um, and how much more I could do with it if I needed to. But I just I just don't. I'm not working on anything, um, uh, or at least I don't have any large scale project that puts this thing through its paces. Luckily, there were a couple of people I could turn to that helped actually show the next level of what this thing is capable of. And the first of those two people is Whitney Knitter. Now, she is a, a YouTuber, but also a professional hardware developer. Um, and her YouTube channel is a really great place. There's some fantastic projects on it, and it's all really well shot and wonderfully presented. Um, and this is a general getting started and unboxing guide. Um, and uh, it's, it's fantastic just for getting a general picture of what the Analog Discovery Pro can do. Um, and there is also a second video on this page uh, uh, embedded from the signal path. And this is an insanely deep dive into what this thing is. Um, it puts it through its pace he's using a variety of different external hardware he also takes it apart and shows you the insides and exactly how it all fits together exactly how Digilent have designed it and how all of the bits work uh, they're both absolutely fantastic so as well as my general overview i suggest watching both of those videos to get a good idea about what the analog pro is so the Analog Discovery Pro, or the ADP3450, 
Um, yeah, it's by far the coolest bit of kit I've used in terms of uh, oscilloscopes and in terms of logic analyzers. Um, as I've mentioned, I'm not the most experienced person in the world to use these things, um, but I was thoroughly impressed by this thing. Um, and uh, if you are uh, interested in buying one of these, um, I'll leave a link to Digital and Shop in the description of the video. Um, at just over a thousand dollars, I feel like for what this thing can do, it's actually incredibly well. Uh, it's incredibly good value. Um, but if you would like to enter the competition, um, you can do that the normal way that we do special competitions. So that is, you must be a subscriber to the Electromaker YouTube channel, um, and I would like you to leave a comment saying exactly what you would do if you had this uh, mixed signal oscilloscope um, and of course uh, leave a hashtag that says digilent it's the name of the company that made it um, and we will be announcing a winner of this thing soon um, and yeah um, as i mentioned if you would like to know more about it head to the article um, that is also in the description watch the two videos embedded in that article uh, this is a truly wonderful piece of kit and i'm very very happy that digilent gave us one to give away uh, so for all of you that enter the competition good luck we'll be announcing the winner next week <laughs> We're going to close out this week's show talking about a few pieces of news. And the first of those pieces of news is that we are having a competition alongside the NXP Cup. Now, the NXP Cup, if you're not familiar, is an autonomous robot building competition. It's, a co uh, it's been run by NXP, and it's in its 10th edition. It's a decade of robot building competitions, which is fantastic. Congratulations to all those that run it and all of those that have been involved, everyone that's taken part. Um, this year, as well as the general competition, we are running a video competition alongside it. Now, the way this works is we want all of the teams to showcase what they are doing by uploading short videos up to YouTube. Now, you don't have to use the fanciest camera equipment in the world. Modern smartphones are by far good enough to uh, to, to do this. Uh, but the real important thing for us is the content of those videos. So um, if you upload a video which has the best educational or technical uh, side to it, that's something that we will uh, be awarding. Uh, but also funny videos, um, something that makes us laugh uh, or something that's a bit of a blooper. If your robot goes to the full electro boom and everything's on fire, um, uh, yeah, th that's also something that we would probably find quite funny. But of course, don't do anything like that on purpose <laughs> because you need your equipment to work. Um, but by the same token, um, uh, educational videos are very welcome, but also videos that are just generally fun. Um, but the third thing is uh, frequency and quality and most engaged. Um, if we see that you are passionate about sharing your project and say aiming for weekly vlogs of a decent quality where you're talking about what you're doing, what works, what didn't, uh, showing us the enthusiasm that's going into your project, that's another thing we'll be looking out for too and it's worth doing this because alongside the general prizes for the nxp cup um we have a 2,000 euro prize fund from Mauser, um, and we're going to be able to award prizes. Now, as it says here, I love this. It's very mysterious. The prizes will be announced later, but to give you a hint, we're looking at some of the latest consumer tech on the market, which we know you will love. So the latest consumer tech that will be of interest to people building self-driving robots. Now, I don't even know what that means at this stage, but I can't wait to find out. The mystery is very mysterious. I like it a lot. So, um, the rules. Each team can enter as many videos as they want, but they must be uploaded to YouTube. Um, you must hashtag the video NXP Cup so we can easily find it, and your team name must also be included somewhere just so we can identify your team. Um, uh, so, yeah, if you include it, probably the best thing you can do to make sure that this works is if you include your team name and the hashtag NXP Cup in the title of the video, also the description of the video, it means it's something that we can easily search on YouTube. If it's just in the video itself, it's not something we'd be able to find so easily. So the NXP Video Cup, alongside the work that you'll be doing on your NXP Cup, we will be featuring you in the show if you upload videos of your project. I'm really excited about this because it's going to be a regular section on the Electromaker show. It's going to allow the wider world to see what you guys are getting up to with your projects. And, uh, and, and speaking to the other you guys, the general Electromaker audience, you're going to get a glimpse into what an autonomous robot building competition looks like in the long term. Um, and we get to experience these videos together, which in a way is kind of what we do on the Electromaker show anyway. This is just a very targeted form of looking at cool projects on YouTube. So I'm super excited about this. I hope you guys are too, whether you are a contestant in the NXP Cup or just someone who'll be watching the Electromaker show. And uh, it probably will be a little while until things get up and running. Um, but yeah, fairly soon-ish, I imagine, uh, we will be starting to see these things rolling in and we'll be able to see these little autonomous robots come to life in front of our very eyes. Moving on to the exciting news of the week, and that is that the Raspberry Pi 02W is finally here. Now, um, the Raspberry Pi Zero was quite an important board for me um, because I uh, got a handful of them when I was kind of quite early starting out doing all this stuff. Um, and there were some concepts, uh, both in terms of electronics and in terms of coding, that I found very difficult to understand. Um, I got a grasp, I think, of the Raspberry Pi ecosystem before I did Arduino. And for a while, the Raspberry Pi Zero was my go-to small board for just general pro uh, projects. 
In fact, looking around this room, I can see various boxes of old projects that probably have Raspberry Pi Zeros uh, embedded deep within them, uh, because at the time I was far more comfortable with a file system and uh, coding in Python than I was uh, uploading things uh, to an Arduino and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, my personal waffle aside, we have a review write-up of the new Raspberry Pi 02W uh, on the website. Um, I was really hoping I would be able to hold up uh, one of the new boards. I managed to, just before they all went out of stock, get two ordered, um, and they should be here now. Unfortunately, they did not get here quite in time, but that is the nature of the postal service in a big city like Berlin. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited about this board. It seems like a great upgrade all around. But yes, in brief, we have an upgraded processor. This is actually the same processor as, as was on the Raspberry Pi 3, running at a slightly slower clock speed. It also has um, some RAM built into the board this time, which I believe was in chip before, but I may have been remembering that wrong. Um, it has, uh, oh sorry, integrated 512 megabytes of uh, LDDR2 SD RAM, um, which is still quite low, but to be perfectly honest, the Pi Zero is meant to be very small and very lightweight, and I don't think I'm ever gonna run into RAM uh, issues with mine. Um, the wireless is built directly into the board, which is very nice, and of course it has the uh, mini uh, camera connector here and a micro SD card slot. I'm assuming most of you are familiar with the Raspberry Pi Zero anyway, and the thing I love about this is that it really is just more of the same but better. Um, it's going to be completely backwards compatible with everything else that the Pi Zero does and has, um, and I just feel like it's a, a, a really nice upgrade, a really uh, understated yet large upgrade, and I know that sounds like a very strange thing to say, but they could have tried to throw the kitchen sink at this thing Instead, I feel like they've taken everything that made the Raspberry Pi Zero good and just improved on it. And of course, we'll see in time and use whether that's the truth, but it certainly seems that way. Now, in the overview we have on the Electromaker website, there are also some projects from various YouTubers. Um, this is the Elector channel, cr uh, creating a subscriber counter using the new Zero Two. Jeff Geerling, who is someone that we are a big fan of here, um, has uh, created a retro handheld gaming console using the Pi Zero Two uh, W. I know there are various people out there who are very excited about it as a retro gaming uh, uh, handheld console. Um, it's something that we will be coming back to in weeks to come, I am sure. Um, there were already some really interesting designs out there for both handheld consoles, but just general handheld decks as well. Really quite interesting. But anyhow, I will leave a link to this article in the description of this video, and we will be taking a physical look at the Raspberry Pi Zero 2 next week, provided, uh, 2W, uh, provided it does actually arrive by then. I'm fairly sure it will. I am very glad that there is a new Pi Zero 2W. Um, I'm very glad that they're still giving this board an update, giving it some love. Um, while this year has been very exciting with the Pi Pico and the Pi 400, um, yeah, this is a truly lovely little board, and for me, an important one, because it, it signified a big step into me actually getting involved and getting my hands dirty and not just taking off-the-shelf code, actually coding my own stuff in Python. Um, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on my own and see what I see what I can do with it. I'm sure there's something I can do up here with it. We're going to close out this week's show by looking at an article on the Magpie website that caught my eye. This is by Phil King, and it's no surprise that this is a Pi Zero accessory that we're looking at here. This is a power over Ethernet hub for the Raspberry Pi Zero that also adds a bunch of USB ports. Um, and as you can see, the form factor is really quite nice. The Pi sits on top like this, and it just makes a nice little block with a huge amount of functionality. So uh, go and have a read through the article. It is very interesting. It's a very nice review, but even just looking at it, there's a couple of things here that are, are, are really nice. Um, so first things first, this is a 8023AF uh, compliant uh, uh, power of Ethernet switch, so you, your router will need to support that. Um, uh, but if I am remembering my protocols right, that's the more widely supported one anyway, so you're probably okay if you have something that supports power over Ethernet. I might have that wrong. Um, but an obvious advantage here is that this is sitting right on the top. So if you have hats that fit on the Pi Zero already, you can just stack up. You can just go straight on top. There's no fighting for pins or anything like that. Um, it's a really nice way of doing it. Um, and uh, I feel like the Pi Zero is the perfect candidate for power over Ethernet because it is so small. Um, and for the most part, it's going to be doing kind of things that require a little bit less power. Uh, the perfect thing for if you want to use a Raspberry Pi for something, but it seems like it might be overkill, but you do want all the benefits of a file system and being able to program in Python, this tiny thing in and of itself could be a server that does a whole bunch of stuff for you. It's a really nice thing. So I will leave a link to this article in the description of the video. So that's been our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you for the continued support you're showing us both on YouTube and by buying stuff from the shop and of course by joining us in our Discord server. Um, if you would like to enter the Digital Ink competition, um, as, you, as you saw earlier in the video, you can see how to. Um, it's really exciting to give that thing away and I know I say this a lot, but I definitely mean it this time when I say I really wish I could keep that thing to myself. It's a fantastic piece of kit. But anyway, I will be back next week with a new show. I wish you all a safe, fun and creative week and I will see you then. <laughs>